Without fear, people become more productive. They become daring. They become creative and they become innovative. But in Africa, we actually have needs that um, if you solve them, you're able to impact the people within the continent. So that is the actual reason why I ventured into entrepreneurship. More people need to understand that whatever we do has an impact on everyone else. And we all make up the environment. It's not just plants or animals. We are all part of the ecosystems. Once there is no fear, they, they will naturally, organically evolve a solution that actually works, not quick fixes. Because education is bigger than what we think it is. It starts from home. It starts with your environment. So when we're talking of environmentally friendly, you are part of the environment. So we need to start looking at all our actions or inactions, how it affects ourselves, our families, and the communities. You can relax. It's just, it's just us. My name is Samuel Anya Ele. This is the mobile prof. <laughs> so the mobile prof, we teach people how to use their mobile phones to uh, code um, on with languages such as Python, JavaScript, and PHP. I think we have four three hundred companies. Actually, we are going to make trillions of dollars. So, my my name is Soso Sena Nutako. For eCampus, our vision is to make learning adaptive, personalized and informally accessible to one billion learners. Wow, that's, that's a good start. <laughs> Name is Sifai and Ochonogo, E-Terra Technologies. We perform in strictly electronic waste recycling and um, data destruction as well. <laughs> it comes from my soul. Redan Directory is a, an application that is on, available on Android and enables the um, informal sector to be seen on the internet space. It's, um, it's an application that um, delivers all skilled workers, both informal and formal sector, in, onto the internet space. So they're able to be seen um, on the internet. Data is bigger than oil. It's what will enable us now build an informal sector bank that enables us to alleviate the problem of the betting and the loans and all that. And when we are looking at employment, we'll be able to be able to source and enable counties to solve the problem of unemployment because we have a business model that targets both employing the informal sector and also building the jobs as we speak. So right now we don't know how many nurses in our county in Nairobi. We don't know how many electricians are in Westlands Market in Kamukunji. We don't know how many people are panel beating the pans. We don't know. But this platform will be able to give us that information and that data to, be, to help us help them better, give them loans. And it's a, it's, data is everything right now for the government. I've been leading directory for from around 2015. I choose to go to ladders. Just open the phone, open the app, then Google what you want and get the assistance. So working in Nigeria, I met several other people. There was Dangote, there was Dr. Micah Denuga, I worked with Dr. Chris Kirubi. I could see them coming from uh, humble backgrounds and making it big and impacting the society in a very, very big way. I'm trying to use technology and I'm not telling them to self-register or download an app. They have no time, they don't have the kind of phone and they don't have the money for data. 
So I'm going to them. I've devised a way from what I learned from my time in Safari Com and Pesa to be able to use that know-how to go out to the villages and form a network of agents that bring the informal sector to the internet space. So for you to become an agent, you have to have the passion to go out there and have the passion for the informal sector. So our agents are created on the back end of our system. So there's a business model. We are able to structure the fees. So we started with $2 to 200 shillings, so that that is shared within the agency structure. So we recruit you, for example, and you become um, an agent. So you are an agency, and you are able to add 50 school um, from four levers under you, up to 100 if you like. So that creates instant employment, and it's Africans to change Africa. It's us Kenyans to do something. So I'm just doing something. I work for Redant as an agent. Uh, my work basically involves going to the street, looking for new service providers. We register them so that they can acquire more customers through our online platform, that is Redant Directory. So far, I've been able to register seven people. If I'm registering a customer, that is a service provider, you just pay 200 bob, which goes to the company through the pay bill, and that's all. We'll never pay anything else. I want to join a Redant uh, directory now so that I can spread the tattoo art. I choose a Redant directory like uh, just to, to spread, to get more market. I've interacted with uh, some of the people uh, on the directory of uh, Redant and uh, the feedback was good. I hope to get uh, good results and feedback from Redant because I know it's a good platform. Finding a uh, funding is not uh, it, it doesn't come easy. So I funded using my other consulting services. So I, if once I get some money, then it goes into uh, funding the building of the code. Redant directory is not yet profitable. So hopefully we will be a big brand. But everyone is trying to get into the informal space right now. We have a saying in a trade and directory. The fact that Ronaldo is a very good football player does not stop Messi from playing. Today, the challenge I'll say we have are around regulations. A kick regulations that need reform because I still don't understand why as a people, as a country, and even as a continent to a certain degree, we do not allow high school kids to use smart devices in school. I don't get it. It's 2020 and there is a ban on using smart devices in high schools. If you really want engineers, you equip your classrooms with what engineers need to use as tools to become engineers. The schools that we worked with, we realized that 90% um, of, of the students do not have PCs. Now we're encouraging them to be part of a tech, um, a tech system, part of an ecosystem that requires that they learn technology, but they literally do not have the current tools that the world expects them to have to be able to be part of that story. A whole generation, a whole generation has been ripped off an opportunity to become the best data scientist to compete with students from Singapore for the same jobs at NASA. A lot of technology schools turn people back when they did not have a PC. And so that's why we started the Mobile Prof. in Africa. There are also real opportunities in Africa. Hello everyone. So we are ready for today. <laughs> we teach people how to use their mobile phones to uh, code um, on with languages such as Python, JavaScript, and PHP. 
So the idea is we, teach, um, we, we raise uh, back-end developers that are not only able to build applications by themselves, but they are also able to work within teams of other developers to produce applications. Create a variable. We explain concepts on the board, then for practicals, um, I project my phone to the screen, and as I am coding on my phone, the students are following me. Remember that array starts with zero. So we started with um, going, doing EdTech. Now, we started building uh, hardware servers, hardware servers that were using to distribute content without internet connection. That, that, that was our last startup. Uh, because it's not something that uh, is uh, existing in the market, There's, there was still a lot of uh, uncertainty about um, the purchase and there was not a lot of marketing around it. So eventually we had to shut down that um, startup last year after four years of um, trying to make it work. A number of times when you fail, it gives you an experience to learn and reflect and be able to see, okay, what did I do wrong? What can I do differently? What do I need to be on board in order to succeed? Failure is actually a critical, critical recipe in success. The only difference is that success, successful people fail and write, fail, learn, reflect, change the way they do things and rise up. People who are not successful, once they fail, they disappear and they can end up not coming back. That gave birth to this new startup because the students that we're dealing with, most of them didn't have laptops. Over 90% didn't have laptops. But they had mobile devices and they were excited about technology. I never thought uh, coding would be that easy you know, on the mobile phone compared to the system. So I must say it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very nice. Investors, especially local investors who know the terrain, should be more realistic in their expectations from startups. Most people who are doing investing in Nigeria who are local investors, they are, not, they are very risk averse. So they give you money and usually the terms uh, that come with the money is such that most likely the money is a loan that you need to pay back in like two years time. So you are running against time, immediately the money lands into your account trying to see if you can generate enough revenue for the guy when he asks back in about two years time or so. so these people who are actually putting money, who we need their support in the system, who know what is going on here, they should be more patient with the money that they are giving the startups. So the idea now is that it's easy to tell investors to bring in money because they can get back their money quicker. We have more impact because we are not building and um, deploying servers in one location at, at a time. It's also easy to generate revenue from electronic content than actual hardware deployment. Success will be like um, having our content in, in all the universities in Nigeria, for example, for the students to be using our content. So what we are doing now is enabling the people who are actually studying in schools to come out of schools better because they are, have a tool that they can practice with. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America headquarters here in Washington. I am Shaka Sali. Straight Talk Africa, we call it like it is. We discuss issues that reflect the interests of our audience without fear or favor. We are guided by facts, and I look at myself as a servant of nothing but the truth. about homeschooling. 
And people never used to understand homeschooling. They say, what is homeschooling? Does it work? We used to talk about virtual classes and people used to say, what are virtual classes? I think more than ever, people have, tried, have, tried, have started to appreciate that even when you don't meet physical, and you meet, you see each other or get information virtually. You're practically you don't you don't miss anything. And for me, it creates an opportunity. This is an opportunity for now young people to get accreditation with international training institutions and be able to say, I can offer you virtual classes here. And for me, that is an opportunity. Majority of students are afraid to fail exams, and that's because they are not ready, or that's because there's no way to measure their readiness. Teachers are also under a lot of pressure. But they don't even know how weak or strong each student is and at what topic or which subject. So how are they going to help the child pass? Then parents are also worried that their kids are going to drop out of school. Employers are disturbed because they feel academia is not training the right kind of skills they need for the jobs they have. And then there is government who has a problem of unemployment, higher demand for education, but low infrastructure and quality. So these are problems that makes fear becomes a norm around education. In Ghana, you have about three options, whether you do the Cambridge, the British system, or you choose the American system, or you choose the Ghana Education Service system. Mostly, if you have the money, you quickly choose the British or the American system because you trust that system. But your own Ghanaian system is not trusted. There's so much fear there. There's uncertainty. So the problem we're solving is to take away that uncertainty from the educational system in this country and across West Africa. I didn't know we we're gonna create something this awesome when when I started. After I had given up on the exams or even going to the university, I never saw myself as dumb. I always believed I was smart enough to pass those exams. But maybe something is just not right about the entire system. Maybe it wasn't designed for people like me. But how do I prove that? So I said, okay, if I could take the past questions, right, that we all normally use to prepare for these exams and I automate the process using Microsoft Access where I can see the questions, answer immediately, and then submit and see where I got it wrong, where I got it right, which topics I'm struggling in. Maybe that could help me better compared to using the books and then those days the former cupboard to prepare. My mom wanted me to be a doctor. I think my dad was more concerned about me doing business in school and all of that. But personally, I, I didn't even know what I wanted to do. I was just interested in building things. You know I, mean? I get fascinated when I see family names on vehicles, and I see family names on petrol filling stations. I used to ask myself, why is Nutako on anything, you know? So that desire to do something that will carry my name was in there, but I didn't know where to start from. By the time I was done with high school to enter university, I kept failing that exam. I think I failed three times and couldn't make it to the universities. But that time I felt maybe the system wasn't designed for me. You know? So I said, let me try something else. And I shifted to computers. And I kind of had fun playing around computers, learning how to program, how to network how to do designs, how to use spreadsheets, and all of that. And that really gave me purpose. And today, that has become the background of most of the things I do. 
So on eCampus, we prioritize our search. So you can come to eCampus and then search for any topic you want to learn from. And then you can follow through and then watch videos if you want. You could practice. Meanwhile, we have our test part where you could take your test doing because it's actually time and it tells you different topics on how you're actually doing it. The technology we have requires that you use smart devices. For the broader picture, because much of Ghana has internet challenges and all that, for the broader picture, what we're doing is to work with the computer labs in these various schools. So they have these computer labs that maybe at every point in time, a class can have a session there. So for that period, maybe an hour or two hours, they can use those computers. So we're trying to see how we can get eCampus onto those computers. And at least, whilst the smart devices are banned, when they get chance to go to the computer lab, at least if it's just 30 minutes or 20 minutes interacting with our technology, we can still get the, you know, the data to tell where they are weak or where they are strong. Then the next step will be to work with the, the hardware manufacturers to see how we can recycle smartphones, laptops, and refurbish them because these kids don't need any sophisticated, they don't need these cameras, they don't need any super super functioning thing. So we can work with all this e-waste agenda or e-waste policies and kind of refurbish used and old devices into usable tablets for kids. <laughs>
policies uh, regulations so we are very happy with uh, what we saw in, in, in the ATRA facilities and we are ready to partner with them in order to solve the menace of uh, e-waste problem in Nigeria. Last year we were 30, oh, okay. but this year we have had to transform the company a little bit. Um, we still, I can say we still have 30 staff, but 20 are permanent staff and 10 to 20 more are actually um, contract staff. I mean, three years on the level that we are now, or two years in the, on the level that we are now. But the, the road to that level was very, very, very tough. I was enlightened to the fact that there are so many people, opportunities, human resources as well as resources within this, this, this country. And I visited Computer Village and I saw some things that I've never seen before, so many technocrats. I was also getting more information about all of the industries that are dormant in the country. All of the things that the country, um, I mean our, our people, we always cry about, we go abroad, we say, oh, we don't have this, that and the other, but we've got to do something. If we don't have it, we've got to do something. You know, that's why I believe I came back to the continent, otherwise I would have stayed in England. I don't see how eCampus has changed much of who I am. I think it's actually brought out who I, who I really am. Right? I'm not a boring guy, I like to have fun. I celebrate everything. I celebrate little, little success. That's what keeps me going. I think what maybe eCampus has taken away from me would be spending time with family. I mean, spending time with family because I may be home, but I'm not home. So I may be there all right, but then I'm busy trying to run the organization. Whether, I'm in, whether it's office hours or out of office hours, it's become a part of my entire life. But uh, I think my family understands that. I make it a part of who we are. I get to involve them in some of the activities. So they can pardon me for a while. But aside that, I'm still me. And I think, yeah, I love my job. Thank you for having us. I love this girl's part.